Okay, thanks for coming back and watching this video. This is the last video in this series on this mountain goat painting. If you haven't seen the other videos, I encourage you to go back and watch them. They show how I got the painting to this point. Every good painting has a good beginning, or at least a solid beginning. And the other videos will show you how I got, yeah, how I started this painting, all the trial and error I went through, how I collected reference material and everything like that to get the painting to completion. So the links are in the description below. Also at the end I'll have some links directly to those other videos. If you haven't subscribed yet I encourage you to do so. I'm going to be posting a lot more videos describing different artistic principles and techniques that are going to help you to become a better painter. So up here I'm putting in this tree. I'm using pretty thick paint even though it's dark paint because I'm already painting over thick paint, I gotta make sure that those subsequent layers are pretty thick in and of themselves. The rule with oil painting is thick over thin, fat over lean. Now, sadly, I ended up having to wipe this whole tree out because I decided it did not work for the composition, but um, it was a good experiment. And uh, I think you'll get a lot out of this showing how uh, sometimes you have to destroy nicely painted things in order to make your painting work out. Going in with the highlights, this is wet on wet of course. Key to this is just putting thick paint down very lightly so you don't disturb the layer underneath any more than you have to. These highlights are a bit too light. John F. Carlson talked about in his guide to landscape painting the um, principles of angles and consequent values. It's a very, very important principle that every landscape painter must know if they're going to have successful landscape paintings. Most landscape paintings fail because they do not understand the principle of angles and consequent values. I will be describing that in a future video, so make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on that. I'm making adjustments to the value of those highlights by just going in and gently blending it with the um, paint underneath. Now slowing the video down here, I'm taking some of this background mountain color and I'm brushing that very gently into the tree. Each time I do that, I'm going to wipe off that green paint off my brush. I do not want that warm green paint getting into those background mountain colors. Now this tree um, is pretty nicely painted. I like how it looks. It's got a nice kind of loose random look to it. The brush strokes are very nice, but I'm not going to leave it there just because it's nicely painted. There's no sense in leaving something well painted in a composition where it doesn't belong. Save it for something else. So if it doesn't work, take it out. And that's what I end up doing with this tree here shortly. Okay, back on the foreground here, making some adjustments to these rocks. And I go back in, there goes the tree. I scraped out all that wet paint with a palette knife. Had it been dry, I could have used a canvas scraper. And I kind of left it at that point because I just wanted to make sure that I really wanted it to go. So if you're unsure about something, work on something else in the painting, go back and look at it with a fresh eye, or just take a break and go back and look at it with a fresh eye. Don't be too rash with your compositional decisions unless you absolutely know or, that they need to be made.
Okay, going in here with a paper towel and just really wiping out those warm greens. I want to get every bit of that paint out of there. You can see I'm rubbing so hard with mineral spirits in the paper towel that I rub back to, act, to the actual canvas itself. But I want to make sure that I don't pollute these pure blues that are back in these distant mountains. And like I said, this is the final video in the series of how I did this painting. Um, when you're done here, go back and check out the other videos and see how it started. It's always a good idea to, you know, watch the process. You know, it's free, so you don't have to pay anything to do that. Go back and check it out and see where I started and how I completed. Because there were a number of decisions that were made throughout this process. Going in with a palette knife here. A palette knife is absolutely wonderful for um, rocks and even for some trees and things like that. Definitely for mountains. Um, you know, one might tend to think of Bob Ross when they think of uh, painting a mountain with a palette knife. But um, whether you're a fan of Bob or not, they definitely do work well. I have to say I've not resorted to using a fan brush yet, but who knows. Just using a bristle brush here to make some blending adjustments and things like that to those palette knife strokes. Sometimes a palette knife stroke can be a, a little too much and it needs some minor adjustments with a brush after it's laid down. And these are just small value adjustments I'm also making to these mountains. Just adding back in some darks with some slightly thicker paint. You can see how it builds up the texture very nicely. I'm slowing it down here to kind of give you a close up of how these textures are built up. Just very lightly adding some highlights to these mountains using a bristle brush. This is uh, number four, I believe. And if you have questions about the materials I'm using or my colors, post them below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. If you have questions about certain techniques, post those below, and I'll be happy to uh, make some future videos to address those. I want this to be a uh, useful experience for you, as well as enjoyable. So um, uh, please let me know what you're thinking, what you're struggling with, and I'll do my best to address it. Now these background trees here on this uh, somewhat distant mountain, this is mostly titanium white, with some viridian and a little bit of the, a little bit of lemon yellow. I don't use uh, lemon yellow is a very cool yellow, so it's great for just adding you know, a little bit of that yellowish color to something that's far off in the distance. I definitely would not want to use a cad yellow light or a cad medium because they're a lot more orange. And as John F. Carlson also pointed out, as things recede into the distance, um, yellow is the first color to go. When you're adding these nice, delicate little things, you want to be careful you don't go overboard. Um, what I try to always do is add a few of them, step back and look at it. You can't see that in this video, but you know this video is edited, but these were not painted this fast. It was a much, much slower process. Using that background mountain color for the shadows of these trees, as cools recede, they tend to merge into the same type of cool color. Back into the foreground, making some adjustments to the rocks, using both the rock color and the background color. Okay, now this rock here at the bottom, I'm going to take this off the bottom of the canvas. You notice how when I do that, it kind of pushes everything back. It adds more dimension to this painting. Um, and taking something off the edge of the canvas is called implied space, and it's a really nice technique for adding 
you know, extra dimension to your work. Slowing down the video once again, showing you how I did this rock. Just adding some very slight um, textures and values to it. You can see here that the paint is pretty thin. That's because I didn't want to draw a lot of attention to this rock. It's on the side of the canvas, and if I go too thick with the paint, it, you know, it has a tendency to draw the eye there. Variety, if you're going for a textured look, variety is a way to go. You want some areas of the canvas to be thick, some to be thin. Of course, there are artists who do all thick and all thin. There's nothing wrong with that. But I tend to like a bit of variety in my textures. Once again, if you haven't done so, subscribe to this channel. I'm going to be posting a lot more videos um, describing how I create paintings, techniques, different things I've learned, mistakes I've made, things that will really help you to become a really good artist. Going back in here with the small brush, adding some stronger ochre colors. This is going to um, definitely imply more of the sunlight reflecting off the grass. And really at this point, I'm not intellectually thinking all this out. It's more, I just kind of feel, try to feel what it needs. Like in this spot here, I'm adding some pinks. These pinks are going to tie the mountain goat in with the rocks. The rocks have a somewhat pink highlight, and so adding these pinks in here are going to kind of bring it all together, tie the mountain goats more strongly with the background. Here I'm just using a larger bristle brush and combining that with a small number zero brush to make some final drawing adjustments. Using a cane here to put in the hooves. The cane is wonderful for stabilizing my, um, my hand for a more careful drawing. And if you have questions, feel free to post them below. And I also encourage you to go back and watch those other videos that show the beginning stages of this painting.